Hello and welcome to the iRecovery Stick video tutorial on how to analyze recovered data. This video is going to walk you through how to analyze the data that you have recovered from iOS devices from either the, an iTunes backup file or directly from the device itself. So let's get started. You've completed an acquisition and you now want to look at the data from the phone or the iPad. So what you're going to look at here is the user data that has been parsed out into readable format. First, we'll start with the contacts. So here you'll see contacts, the, the date that they were created, the names and all the information. And as you scroll over, you'll get more information about the contacts. If you were processing an older iOS device that could still recover deleted um, contact information, you can recover that or you can see, view that here on this page. Unfortunately, starting with about iOS 11.4 um, recovered data, it was no longer possible uh, and once it's been deleted. Next, let's look at con or messages. Here are text messages. And you can see that the text messages can be thousands upon thousands of uh, SMS messages in that history. Um, so I recommend that you actually either do it by date, if you know exactly what you're looking for, or um, you can use a search feature here to search for specific information if you're looking for specific uh, text message data. Um, next, let's go to call history. Now keep in mind that call history now in iOS 14 and above can only be recovered from encrypted backups or encrypted phone data. Um, we talk about encrypted data in our how-to video for iOS 14. So I recommend that you watch that if you haven't already. So the call history will just show you all the call history. Um, it is split up for uh, call history from older iOS devices or from a, a device that has been upgraded um, over time, it will still have often the uh, older call history when it was set to that older version of iOS. So you can still possibly see that call history from way back um, from iOS 7 or below. Um, but this is where you'll view the call history again. I do recommend using the search feature if uh, you're seeing too much call history, if you can't manually get through all that data. Um, organizer data, I actually didn't have any data to show on that. It will just show any organizer um, data that, you, that people have entered in manually. Most of the time people don't use that feature. You'll see just um, the default entries for holidays and things like that. Next we have graphics. Um, and I want to spend a little bit of time talking about graphic analysis here. We do have a built-in graphic viewer that will display all the data uh, for known images. However, every once in a while, um, you'll run across an image that can't be displayed and it will look something like this. Sometimes that's because that image um, has the header or the file header of a JPEG or a different graphic, but it might actually just be a small thumbnail um, or it may be corrupted. Uh, most of the time it's because it is a system file that isn't quite um, visible with it, the viewer. However, um, if you export all the images, you may sometimes be able to change the file extension. So say for example, this one might not even have a file extension. You may be able to put a .jpg JPG at the end of that and then Windows would be able to display what that image is. Um, so to do that, if you right click over any one of the images, you can click or select export all and then choose the folder to export all the images to. And it will actually export all of the images, whether they can be viewed or not, to a folder. And then you can manually um, change the extension for anything that doesn't have an extension. Um, most of the time, though, these images are going to be system files or thumbnails. Maybe a, a text message, an image was sent in a text message and, and the preview file was, was created as a thumbnail and that's all you're going to see. However, sometimes in an investigation, those can be of use because maybe text messages were deleted 
Um, we, we can't recover those. Maybe photos were deleted. We can't recover those. But at one point, uh, a photo was copied or uh, sent via text message and a, a thumbnail was created. So you might see some evidence of the original file, even though it's no longer on the phone, using that method. It is time consuming, um, but can be worth it for advanced investigations. Next, let's talk about, talk about multimedia. Multimedia files are going to be similar in nature to uh, graphics. Um, for example, here you'll see .heic images that we can't display um, in our file viewer here. But if you export that, again, by right-clicking and selecting Export, you can export one image at a time or one, one file at a time or export them all. Once you've exported them, Windows will actually display HEIC photos, um, whereas we can't. And then for files like the AMR file, these are actually voicemail messages. Um, so you're going to have to export them and then play them in a program that can actually play AMR files. And I, I believe the Windows uh, default media player can play those, those files for you. You might find also in here .wav files. Now these files are going to be, most of the time, it's going to be voice commands to Siri. So if the user says, hey Siri, you're going to hear that actual recording of the user saying, uh, hey Siri, and whatever they ask Siri, and it's going to be .wav. So for advanced investigations, I do recommend exporting all these files um, where you can view, if they're video files, you can view them, or their audio files, you can listen to them through the Windows default video and, and, and audio players. So that's multimedia files. Internet data, um, you're going to have different internet data depending on the version of iOS, but um, you can see Safari data, uh, su suspended state data, the history, bookmarks, um, as well as cookies that the sites put on there. So sometimes if, if somebody uh, clears their history, but they didn't clear their cookies, you might still be able to see sites that they visited um, and it will have dates that they visited. Um, and you can see here, sometimes like for cookies, you're gonna have to look in the advanced data. It's gonna be a lot of mumbo jumbo, but you might see a URL in there um, in that, that data. So this is just gonna take some time to, to sift through all that data manually and to see what's in there. Now recovered data is unfortunately no longer viable with um, newer versions of iOS. If you're analyzing um, or investigating an older device that's running an older version of iOS, you might be able to see um, recovered deleted data here. Um, but again, unfortunately with the newer versions of iOS, that data is no longer available on the phone. It's just, it's just not there. Um, for us to recover. Now for other data, the amount of data that you're going to see in this section depends on the type of recovery that you did. If you did the recommended encrypted recovery where you create um, an iTunes backup file with a password which encrypts the, the device and the, password, uh, the iTunes file that you can recover the data from, then you're going to get a lot more data. And this is where you're going to view that data. Otherwise, you're probably just going to be able to see the properties of the phone um, and not all this other extra data. And if you don't know how to do the encrypted um, backup recovery, I recommend that you watch the recovery on how to perform um, a recovery from iOS 14. Um, so let's talk about the data. The first data is just the the um, properties of the device, including the phone number, the, the name of the phone, and other information. Um, as far as current user data goes, this is actually data from the help app. So it's going to show you the information from the user that is entered if they've used the help app. And this will include, if you click on steps, steps taken, um, by date, uh, walking. Now this is the same data, but it's just by distance in kilometers. Uh, flights climbed will be the number of flights climbed. And then you get into information that might not be as inf important or actually readable 
certificates doesn't have anything that's really uh, of use that I can find um, so we're gonna skip that and go over to Wi-Fi passwords um, you can see here that there is um, information on password or passwords for Wi-Fi that this phone is connected to the name of the Wi-Fi network the password um, and other information that they created etc um, so I am going to show you a little bit of other data. Sometimes as we get into other data, um, you can see most of this information is just services. Um, this is really in-depth uh, file system information. But every once in a while, you can get information such as the uh, account email address. This might be important if you don't know the uh, Apple ID account or, or things like that. So it's always worth at least looking at that type of other information. Um, here we have web form passwords. So this is from Safari that the user has saved passwords as they're going to different uh, websites. It will have the account information, the account name, uh, and password, um, etc. So that can be very, very valuable information right there. Um, here we get into other information such as map history. This is Apple map history. Um, as well as directions if uh, they've asked for directions in maps. So that right there is some of the most valuable information you can get with passwords, um, map history, and things like that uh, from other data. Next we'll talk a little bit about application data which also shows a lot of user data that can be very important. Here at first we'll just see a list of applications, version numbers, um, the internal application name, um, and then as we slide over, you'll see things like um, the permissions that the app has. So what, what information the apps are uh, accessing. If you click on the application data here, you're going to see some parsed out information. So we're able to get more information from certain apps. Now some of these apps are old, um, outdated, and on, are no longer supported. Um, either by a Apple or they've been removed from the store or we're unable to um, update them and get more user information. But for popular apps such as uh, um, TikTok, we can get things like conversations within TikTok between users. Um, within Chrome, we can get history. So if they're using Chrome as their browser rather than Safari, we can get history, keywords, um, at one point, we could get recovered data, but as I mentioned, um, data is no longer kept once it's deleted on the phone, and so it's not recoverable. Um, so there's a lot of information that you can get from application data, um, including things like Facebook Messenger conversations, um, and then even file hiding apps. There are some apps that don't encrypt the, the files that they hide, and we can actually sometimes get to that those hidden files um, and, and find those. Next we have voicemail. And these are, uh, it'll tell you the duration, the timestamps, etc. Um, as you slide over, you can actually uh, click link to the actual voicemail file that will be in multimedia files. Um, so this is just enough, another way that you can view information from voicemails rather than just the voicemail itself. Next, let's talk about the search function. If we come up here to the search bar and enter in text data, such as a phone number, or maybe a username, or a, a person's name, or maybe even keywords um, for your type of or investigation that you're performing here. If you're looking for illicit drugs, you can type in things like that, um, maybe slang words for drugs, or whatever it might be, whatever your case might be, you can search for that here, and it will search through all the text data and pull up the results and you can click on those to view the actual resource, the results. And this can be very valuable if you're just looking for a broad search terms um, or even very specific search terms and you're looking through all the data at once. Um, but there's a lot of data go, to go through so it may take some time to, to perform a search. Um, next we can look at bookmarks. Now a bookmark is when you see something interesting in your investigation you can right click over it and click add to bookmark and then add a description um, and a, a sort description and a detailed description. Once you've done those, you can come down here and manage those bookmarks. You can either scroll through the, them if you have a bunch or you can right click 
um, and view the details, edit it, or delete them um, if they're no longer important to your investigation. Last, we're going to talk about exporting your data. You can export your data, and this is text data, um, all the conversations, um, SMS, etc., to an Excel sheet by going up to the file and clicking on um, Export to Microsoft Excel. Here you're going to browse to where you want to save that file and hit the Export button. Keep in mind that you actually have to have a licensed version of the current Excel um, to be able to export the, the data and it will take a long time to export because it's creating a huge Excel file with a lot of information to it. So be patient with that. I do recommend that you spend a lot of time analyzing the data and going through all the different things as there is so much information from these devices that you've acquired uh, in your investigation. Um, thank you for joining me today and please visit our website uh, paraben-sticks.com for any support needs. Thank you.